Um, there's been a, a recent development in our state, um, and I've got something <coughs> I'd like to share. Um, some may find some of this offensive. Um, if you do, you deserve it. Recently, the governor signed into law AB 1955, now known as the Safety Act. If you weren't aware, the Safety Act aims to ban school districts from passing parental notification policies, which require the district to inform parents when the child is requesting to change their pronouns, their name, or their gender. This law blatantly puts division between the child's parent or legal guardian and their children's teachers, school administration, and district as a whole. How much distrust of our schools and teachers does this law sow into our families? I refuse to look away, keep silent, and be complicit in such a vile and vicious attack on our families. In this state, the parent is no longer the arbiter of what is right for their children or their family. Politicians tell parents what is and isn't allowed in their own homes. And that lying to our children is what is best. As I've mentioned before, late last year, the governor signed a myriad of laws, both limiting the rights of parents, letting adolescent children make bodily and life-altering decisions, letting high school-aged males use the girls' bathrooms and locker rooms, and hamstringing locally elected school boards. After the fiasco of COVID and all the nightmares that came with it, parents like myself and many others started paying attention, getting involved, and actually wanting to have a say in their child's safety and school experience. This is the entire point of local elections and having locally elected representatives. When state officials are interfering and changing laws when it doesn't suit a narrative or group's agenda, we have a broken system. With these new laws, a 12-year-old child can opt to bend the laws of basic biology and reality, fluidly choose or create a new gender, demand their teacher call them a new name, refer to them as a gender they are not, which they have no physical or possible capability of being, decide they want to chemically castrate themselves, surgically remove their reproductive organs, take drugs to synthetically stop the natural progression of their bodies and minds, and permanently destroy the possibility of the blessing of childbirth later in life. Let alone the mental and emotional trauma this may cause. This is what a child can do in California. As if there is no possibility that a mature adult might forever regret the choices they made as a young child. But a child still needs a parent to have their ears pierced if they're under the age of 18. If a parent says no to any of this, the state can legally remove the child from the home of the parents that gave birth to, raised, and loved their child. This is sheer, utter depravity, and it is plain evil. <clears throat> in the Bible, it mentions in the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that to willingly lead a child astray into harm... Excuse me, and, ne and neither do you. Excuse me, and neither do you, and neither do you. I'm not telling, excuse me. Why are you taking offense to this? Why? Why are you taking offense to this? Excuse me. Oh, I'm not done either. I am not done. Excuse me. This is my time, thank you. You're, you're right I am. I'm on the board. I can say what I can say whatever I want. Thank you. <laughs> okay. In the Bible, it mentions in the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke that to willingly lead a child astray into harm or to stumble, it is better to tie a large millstone around your neck and toss yourself into the depths of the sea than to answer to God for it on the day of judgment. Choosing to be complicit in facilitating the destruction of a child's mind or body is simply grooming and makes one just as guilty as the twisted, depraved minds that wrote this law. And one such person should be nowhere near anyone's child. Our children are engulfed in confusion from every angle and every outlet, a steady flow of degeneracy, debauchery, lewdness, perversion, violence, and all forms of things that do nothing but bring degradation to our future. 
Shouldn't school be a place that silences all that confusion with truth, especially if they aren't getting it at home? Shouldn't school be a place that parents trust leaving their child? The lawmakers of the state are doing everything they can with curriculum, narratives, and laws like these to destroy the bond between families. Lawmakers in the state are doing a great job of bringing the age of public education to an end for many families in our community. Homeschooling and co-ops are at an all-time high and growing because of this demonic insanity, and good for those families who are willing and able to. We should be a safe option for those who can't. We need to fight and stand against the sexualizing of our children and let them just be kids. I thank God regularly for the teachers that my kids have had and I've come to know. If it weren't for the many amazing teachers at our district schools, and if my children's school wasn't as special of a place that it is because of its teachers and leadership, my children would be nowhere near public education in California. A lawsuit has been filed to fight against AB 1955 by another school district, and others have hopped on board. This law is expected to receive a stay before January 1st and brought before the Supreme Court as it is a gross violation of the constitutional rights of the parent to make decisions concerning the care, custody, and control of their children. That being said, I will be bringing forth a parental notification policy in our district for discussion, board consideration, and a vote. And I ask that you join me in praying for our state, our families, and our students. Thank you.